Hi guys, Dr. Chloe Koskin here from Mobility Doc. We are on to week three of Yoga for Runners. So if you haven't done weeks one and two, make sure to give those a try, but you don't necessarily have to start with one um, in order to get the benefit of the other. But they are all helpful for improving our running mechanics. So um, today we're going to tackle down dog. This is one of the most common yoga poses. This is a lot of times what we think of when we think of doing yoga. This corresponds really well to runners because in order to be able to get the propulsion that you need when you run, you need to make sure that the mechanics of the entire back of the leg are doing what they're supposed to. In particular, your hamstrings, calves, and your feet need to be flexible enough in order to make sure that you have proper running mechanics. One of the last parts of push off when you're running is being able to extend your big toes. You need about 55 degrees of big toe extension in order to be able to activate your glute. Now, this is really important because if you've done all this flexibility work through your hip flexors, you've done all this glute strengthening, now you're going to be leaving some of that on the table if your toe can't fully extend. What happens then a lot of times is runners start to run with their toes pointing out. If you see the best of the best runners, they are able to push off from that big toe. So we are going to focus on the flexibility throughout the entire back of the leg because you have connective tissue that runs from your glute to your hamstring, down through your calf and in through your foot. So we need to stretch that entire chain. This week is all about down dog, one of the most popular yoga poses. So let's do a pre-test. I'm gonna talk you guys through what I find to be helpful in terms of setting up, okay? So my shoulders are underneath my wrists. I'm gonna to try to extend from my middle back. So I'm not rounding, I'm extending through my middle back. I'm gonna walk my knees back slightly. Now most people start with their feet, or a lot of times people will start with their feet. Um, and their legs too close together, you want them to be about hips distance apart. I'm gonna tuck my toes and then I'm gonna slightly hover. So I'm hovering, then I'm gonna push my hips back. So you see how my knees are still bent? I'm gonna push my hips back and then I'm going to straighten my knees. That's gonna help to make sure that I maintain this triangle kind of shape here where I'm going to make sure that I'm hinging from my hips and I'm not hinging from my waist. If your hamstrings are tight, it's going to be hard to maintain this neutral spine in your in your lumbar spine. You're going to be much more inclined to round. But today we have your remedy for that. Follow along with me as I go through the three different stretches we're going to do to improve our down dog. I'm going to start by lying on my um, lying on my back. I'm going to try to create an arch in my back, and then my big toe and my kneecap are in line. I'm trying to make sure that I'm pressing through that pinky edge side of my foot and my big toe, so then they're in line. What happens a lot of times is that arch kind of turns up a little bit. Then I'm going to bend and straighten this knee, trying to just think about this motion coming just from the knee when I do this. So I'm not moving this thigh down at all. We're gonna do this for 30 seconds. So each time that I'm doing this, I'm gonna be able to challenge a little bit more of that flexibility through that area. Good, and then we're gonna switch sides. So now make sure reset, you're gonna feel that arch in your, um, that arch in your back. Your toes are going to be, um, your toes are gonna to be in line with your kneecap and you're just gonna bend and straighten. You might find that one side feels a lot tighter than the other side. That is totally normal. So for me, my left side's a little bit tighter. So I have to like, um, I have to let up on that rope a little bit and then bring my thigh down a little. So then it's a little bit more tolerable to stretch it. So just slightly bending back and forth, trying to keep those toes pointing straight back toward me. Good, and now single, single leg down dog. So tuck your toes, push your hips back, and then you're going to shift that weight over to that right side, and then you should feel that stretching through the back of the right leg. We're gonna hold this for 30 seconds. I'm really trying to focus on pushing that thigh back as best I can, because this is going to help us to make sure that we are maintaining um, that hip hinge position 
as we're challenging that flexibility. And switch sides. So now I'm pushing that hip back, dropping that heel down as best I can to get that stretch all through the back of the leg. Good, I'm really trying to think about pushing that part down as best I can. Good, and then we're gonna move on to the kneeling toe stretch. So I'm coming, I'm gonna kneel on my, uh, I'm gonna kneel, my toes are gonna to be pointing straight ahead as best I can. And now I'm keeping my kneecap and my big toe in line with each other as I start moving down toward the ground, okay? And now I'm really trying to make sure that that heel isn't pushing out to the side. So I need to make sure that I'm thinking about making sure that those heels, if anything, especially my left side, it has to come a little bit more toward midline. So if you can tolerate it, you can sit all the way up and kind of put a little more pressure there. I don't need any more pressure, especially because on my left toe, uh, definitely doesn't feel like it needs anymore. Good, now we're moving on to the second round. So my, I'm gonna lie on my back, put that, um, put that strap around your foot and then you're going to bend and straighten that knee. So I'm pushing, so I'm trying to pull my toes back toward me as I bend and straighten that knee. So I'm really trying to think about, it's like that whole thigh bone is pushing back just like that. So now you should probably feel that this is feeling a little bit looser as we go. Good, and then you're gonna switch sides. It's definitely starting to open up a little. I love doing this dynamic hamstring stretch like this because it allows you to just progressively get a little bit more range. It also gives you an opportunity to make sure that you're, um, that you're focusing on your form. So what will happen a lot of times is those toes will start to point, um, your, your big toe will start to turn up and we wanna try to make sure that we're keeping both, um, we're trying to press through that big, uh, that big toe. Good, and then we're doing single leg down dog. So push your hips back as much as you can and then shift that weight over to that right side. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm really trying to make sure that that hip isn't pushing out to the side either. What will happen is that those big toes, like the, your toes will start to turn out to the side. You wanna to try to keep that in line with the heel as best you can. Good, drop that heel down. and switch sides. So I'm dropping that heel down. Make sure that you're like really pushing back through that hip. Try to like, you can try to tighten that, that quad a little bit. You just wanna make sure you're not hyper extending that knee though. Remember though, this is like for someone who is not particularly flexible in the hamstring. So you're not really at as much of a risk of hyper extending your knee. Good, and now we'll do that big toe stretch. So I'm kneeling and then I'm going to slowly come forward just to my tolerance, especially my rate limiting side is this left side. So this is definitely where it's tighter for me. So I'm really trying to think about, it's getting progressively better, but I'm trying to think about making sure that that heel isn't pushing out to the side as I do it. We're just gonna hold this. You can start to, if you need to, kind of push back the closer your feet are together. Um, sometimes that can be um, more, more challenging too. We just wanna make sure though that that kneecap is in line with the heel. So we don't want your knees starting to um, display out to the side. Good. Last time, dynamic hamstring stretch. You're gonna bend and straighten that knee. If you're starting to feel like you're a little bit more warmed up, then you can straighten this bottom leg. 
you want to think about, I keep needing to think about pushing in through the big toe because what will happen is it's easier for me to push in from this pinky edge side of my foot. So every time I do this, I need to push in through that big toe. Good, and then you're gonna switch sides. Good, so bend and straighten. Now check in with that low back. So is it starting to flatten? You wanna to try to create a slight arch in your back as best you can. That's what's gonna be really helpful for improving some of that flexibility. Good, last time, down dog stretch. So tuck your toes, push your hips back, and then you're going to drop that heel. I'm really trying to think about um, creating a slight arch in my low back, just like what I did in, just like how I did in that supine hamstring stretch. I'm going to push that hip back. Good, and then we're going to switch to the other side. So push that hip back, drop that heel down, press through all sides of your foot. Good, nice job guys. Last time, big toe stretch. I'm gonna show you guys from the, from the back this time. So my toes are, my toes are tucked and then I'm gonna slowly come down now the thing that I'm trying to focus on is making sure that this heel is in line with my toes. Because what happens is, especially on this left side, you see how it's going to start to kind of like, uh, it's gonna move out to the side. So I really need to focus on doing, on trying to pull that in. Now if I can't really tolerate that, then I'll just go back to just kind of squatting on my legs and then eventually then I can kind of move down. You can also place something like towels or something like that. Um, or yoga blocks underneath your knees to help you to just like kind of rest a little bit if you, if you wanted to. And then every time I do that, I kind of need to readjust where that foot is. Now that we're done with the three rounds, let's retest down dog. So my hands are just underneath my shoulders. I'm gonna walk my knees back just slightly. I'm gonna tuck my toes, hover my knees, and then I'm gonna push my hips back as much as I can. And then as I keep pressing through those big toes, I'm going to drop those heels down. So I'm hinging from this part of my, my hip, and then I'm trying to drop that heel down as best I can. And then I need to press through my big toe and then also the pinky edge side of my foot. I'd love for you guys to get in a rotation of doing weeks one, two, and three. That's what I've been doing as part of my post-run stretching. I'll do week one, then I'll move on to week two, and then uh, week three is on a different day. Um, it's going to be helpful for progressively improving some of that flexibility, which is going to improve our running mechanics. Make sure to share this with your running friends if they're not already doing it. I always find that it's helpful if I can have a buddy that is helping me to, uh, to stay accountable.